there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Great. Hey, dudes. Welcome to Do That's Fucked Up. Happy Wednesday, or if whenever you're listening to this, but yeah, happy day. Happy, happy fill in the blank day. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to our podcast that is about things that are fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, we <laughs> are best friends talking about so many things. <laughs> Last week we talked about Motley Crue. Oh my god! And how gross they are, but also how fun, how like sexy too. Uh, I, you know, I still don't really. Even back in the day, we know how I feel. We don't need to get back into it. I know. I, you know, I get it. I like it <laughs> to a degree. Yeah. But knowing what I know now, it's like, man. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are wiping your assholes with socks. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Better yeah. or worse than toilet paper. It probably picks up more of the residue. But Maybe. there's already like foot it's... juice on it. Uh, it you know oh. it wasn't a clean sock. Like an athlete's foot riddled <laughs> sock. Oh, God. Uh, do you think anyone's ever had athlete's butt? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my it's God. Like a, I mean, I'm sure. It's a fungus. It's, like, it's a fungus. Yeah. And it, it, your butt crack and hole or like a crevasse yeah that gathers bacteria so yeah i'm sure oh let us know if you've had a butt butt fungus let us know if you've had athlete's hole (laughs) yeah (laughs) sick uh no 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 uh that things happen man um any business uh this week no um just the standard Go to our website. Yeah, I like, wait, I like in our notes how, you, like, Erin wrote a little introduction. She's like, this is a comedy podcast that will, and then in parentheses, maybe make you laugh. And I crossed it out, and I was like, no, <laughs> bitch, we will. We will. Bitch, we will make you laugh. <laughs> well, and if it's not you, it's us. So yeah. someone's laughing. You're going to laugh at the fact that we're laughing at things that aren't necessarily funny. <laughs> we're just laughing. You're like, Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, but yeah. to the business. Um, uh, no, I mean, I don't think so. I, I would say uh, subscribe on iTunes if you're an iTunes user. Yes, please. Leave a rating and a review. We'd love to hear from you and hear what you like about this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly just like. And you don't have to talk about what you don't like, but you could if you want. But like. I mean, you know, you could shoot us a private note. We're very <laughs> yeah. open on, on all channels of social media uh-huh. and email and whatnot. Yeah. So, what are we doing um, right? What are we doing wrong? What are we just yeah. doing? I call those strengths and opportunities. Oh. What do we have an opportunity to improve upon? Oh. That would be great. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Our website is dtfupodcast.com if you wanted to go there and check out all the things on the website, which... You can see a really funny picture of us. Mm -hmm. You can subscribe to different uh, podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. We are on on Spotify. I don't know if you guys knew that. (gasps) We should have led with Um, that. I feel like I always forget. And then I'll like go and look at our analytics. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're on Spotify. That's cool. And people just like randomly find us. And it's crazy. Yeah. A lot of people have found us through Spotify. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Anything fucked up this week for you? Yesterday, my beloved Peter Muse. Yes, uh, Angel. Angel baby. Uh, mm-hmm. Angel adult. Angel man. Angel man. Angel man. <laughs> um, <laughs> he entered a burger eating contest and he got second place. But Mm-mm. it was a very close call. He ate five in and out cheeseburgers in five minutes. Oh, my God. I could probably do that, but not really. (laughs) Well, there was a conspiracy because there was a pregnant lady in the competition, and they're like, is that fair? She's eating for two. Bitch, no. That's Okay, let me tell you something right now. 
you do not have the room you think that's you what do. i said yeah that i was like i feel like yeah that's like a funny it's a disadvantage if anything yeah because your stomach put it is it. smashed unless yeah. your baby's like an alien and it just there's like a tube from her mouth into her baby's mouth and it's just like oh lol, lol, lol. that's not how that no. shit works y'all no but if your it baby's not alien. beer bonging any wine <laughs> your baby's not like doing the fucking burger eating contest no. with you they're yeah. getting that it's all absorbing and through your bloodstream and your intestines and shit yeah they just get the nutrients they don't get the good stuff no they don't even know what that should taste like yeah i know well poor kid yeah that's sad for them but they'll learn someday but uh but they know if mom anything likes they're it. feeling the effects of sodium mm, yeah <laughs> It was probably dangerous for her to enter, yeah. but she did what well, yeah. she didn't win. She wasn't even anywhere close, but it came down. No. It came down to Pete and this other dude and how they determined that Pete was second place and not first place is that the guy who won, they, they had roughly the same amount of, well, okay. The guy who won had eaten a bun and a patty of his last burger uh-huh. And Pete had eaten like two thirds of his whole last burger. So like top and bottom bun. But there oh. was like still some meat left. So so they were like, well, I guess since this guy ate more meat, technically he wins. But the bread's the harder part to get down. The bread is the harder part. Yeah. So, you know, I think maybe I'm going to say I, I if I was a judge, I would have given Pete the gold. I think so. But not 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 because I'm biased because yeah. I know him, but because that is yeah. just how it works. Yeah, same. I know. Sorry, you know? I know. Sorry. But he did win a PS4, which is pretty cool. What? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I know. He won like an actual real thing. So he was so yesterday. And was he got his to eat day. five fucking in and out burgers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For free. That's tight. Although he's wow. probably not going to want to eat one for a long time. I don't think he felt very good yesterday. He looked <laughs> sweaty when I saw him like hours <laughs> later. I was like, are you okay? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then like, yeah, he just, uh, I don't know. I asked him this morning. I'm like, did you take like a big poop? And he was like, no. He probably it, will be constipated for like three days probably, or something. Probably, yeah. He said it was just a regular poop. I was like, oh, no. That means it's uh -uh. still in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh. Well, get ready. Yeah, Pete. get ready. Light the candles around the apartment. Yeah, you're gonna have a an evacuation soon. Uh huh. Evacuate the dance floor. Oh, oh. <laughs> he ate too many burgers. <laughs> I don't know. Um, good luck with that. Yeah, thanks. that's a great. That's so great. Yeah, that's not fucked up. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Except for fine. maybe the potential for a huge blowout later. Yeah, blowout. <laughs> oh, oh. I have another thing I was going to tell you, but it's kind of sad, so maybe not. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you after. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's not fucked up. It's very fun. It's great. But also, that's you so don't cool. need to eat five cheeseburgers, so he's never doing it again. Yeah, I mean, that's like a, you do it once, you, you win a PS4. Yeah. Everybody wins. Yep. Well, shall we talk about our topic a little bit today? Yeah. Let's get into it. It's some weird Let's shit. Let's do it. I feel... This is some weird shit. I feel like a crazy person. <laughs> I do, too, a little bit oh, after, okay. after this. reading this. Yeah. Um, so this week's episode is about um, biohacking. I don't have a really great way to, like, roll into the topic. That's fine. Um, I called it DIY biology. Yeah, D it is. DIY BIO. <laughs> DIY bio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the Wikipedia definition of biohacking is uh, a growing biotechnical social movement in which individuals, communities, and small organizations study biology and life science using the same methods as traditional research institutions. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, but then Webster's Dictionary has a totally different definition. Oh. <laughs> the activity of exploiting genetic material experimentally without regard to accepted ethical standards <laughs> or for criminal purposes. So I feel like somebody who's a bio biohacker definitely made that Wikipedia entry. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. it sounds very benign and like, like, you know. It's the study of science. It's the study of like rogue science. And it's like. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I could accept both definitions. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, right that's now. fair. That's fair. But that's why we don't just use Wikipedia. That's right. Uh, 
because it's one it's just one source. You gotta round that shit out so you have the yeah. facts. You know there's people in the world that are just writing things into Wikipedia. Yeah. It's like probably mostly people with ponytails. It's that yeah. it's like probably mostly that guy <laughs> who got who just got evicted from his own parents' basement. I mean, there's nothing wrong with living in your parents' basement. Mm, but, like, uh, maybe if they've asked you repeatedly to move out and they've gotten to the point where they have to sue you to ask you to leave, there's, oh, there's sure. definitely a problem. Yeah, when you're getting evicted from your own parents' house. Yeah, that's like not through good. the court system. <laughs> it's gone too far. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know. It, it's, all, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, community. Yeah. Um, it's yeah it's very like uh, I don't want to say rogue but like like it's very DIY uh, very yeah. novice amateur uh, it's very sort amateur of. sort of some of these people are legitimate like bi- like biology like not just students but uh, people who've worked in have a background in science yeah some yes, but most are sci- are what I like to call scientists. They're not <laughs> scientists, uh, and they're doing this like over their laundry hamper in the corner of their room. They're like there's some hobbyists yeah, in there, hobbyists. a lot of hobbyists, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and they're not in a lab environment yeah. for the most part, which is concerning because it's not sterile yeah. or controlled. Yeah, uh, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, but still, like, what does it even mean? Like, mm-hmm. biohacking projects uh, typically revolve around the modification of life and molecular and genetic engineering. So, anything that you can do to modify your own genes mm-hmm. or, or DNA in some way, uh, it's becoming more appealing due to the nature of research and information readily available and accessible on the internet. We're in a very interesting time right now where anybody, can just like look at a peer reviewed journal, take the information from that and, you know, if they have any kind of background mm-hmm. or knowledge or, or practical experience, try to, you know, make it happen. And I think some people are on the level of hobbyists and some people are on the level of like legit scientists. Like they have worked at research labs before. Like I said, there's there's some legit people doing this stuff, but a lot of novices so but like you know you know those uh these are very fun they're like pinterest fails yeah like you've seen what can go wrong when (laughs) someone just tries to make a fucking sheet cake that looks like a unicorn it looks like an abomination (laughs) and and it's a face is all melted and it scares children yeah, I mean, there's a whole fucking Netflix show dedicated to it. It's uh, do you wa- have you watched it? It's so good. Uh, yeah. Nicole Byers is so fun. She's the best. But yeah. like that show is so fun. Yeah, if you're out here like and you're not a professional baker, yeah, with you know decades of experience, uh-huh. and you maybe be you might be a really good baker. Yeah, you might be doing some things. But then you go to do some of the techniques and shit that is involved in some of these more professional. intense professional things, mm-hmm. and you might have something coming out looking like a demon cake. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, and that's just fucking baking. <laughs> and now I want to make a demon cake. I think that'd be very fun. Yeah. But like an shit. intentional one that looks good, not that's just yeah. like scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what can like look at what can go wrong just trying to DIY a cake that's right Um, DIY anything is always kind of questionable so yeah for this episode I highly recommend watching the vice piece on uh, the company ascendance biomedical Mm -hmm. this came out uh, I think like a few mm, few months ago yeah Um, very interesting Uh, there's so there's like all these companies popping up that have these kind of um they're not uh legit research labs they're just like people getting together doing this stuff in like a strip mall <laughs> literally <laughs> um and then i also recommend the new york times article uh 
entitled as DIY gene editing gains popularity, someone is going to get hurt. That's the title of it. So yeah. Um, it's just, it's interesting. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said ethically and philosophically about this kind of stuff where you're kind of tampering with, uh, with things that we aren't really 100% sure about. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there, well, there's like so many philosophical discussions about it. Cause like, I don't know, biohacking is kind of like open sourcing, which right. is very good in some ways, but can also be very bad in some ways. And I feel like right. if you watch the Vice documentary, it's like 11 minutes. It's like a segment from another, from like a, yeah. uh, one of their HBO shows or something. Um, yeah. It's only 11 minutes, but you see like how some of those discussions, like it's very polarizing and people are on opposite sides and we'll talk about some of that stuff. But yeah, it's um, all very, yeah, I, I find it fascinating. I mean, and... And it all comes from a really good place, too. Yeah, so, yeah. like, um, the whole reason people are, like, so into this is because um, there's there's so much that we want to cure, that we want to, to help people with. And these people are, you know, kind of frustrated with, like, bureaucracy of, of the typical way of how we fund and how we do research for, like, can- cures for cancer, cures for AIDS, whatever. So I think if you're lucky enough to be blessed with a body that functions properly, mm-hmm. uh, you probably haven't really given a second thought to the idea of swapping genes and, and you know, replacing damaged DNA or whatever the, the fuck they think they can do. Yeah. Um, uh, and it probably sounds really weird and scary just in general that this is the thing that we can sort of do. We, we have – we have developed some technology and some research to, to, uh, sort of do this stuff. Um, and we're working on it. I mean, that's what all the the latest research for cancer and AIDS and everything and Alzheimer's and anything that is, you know, on a molecular level, uh, is that's how we're trying to treat the, these diseases now. Yeah. So, um, it's it's all very it all comes from a really good place that these people want to speed up the process, move forward, do do things to find cures. Like totally get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like also there's on a kind of like more shallow level, people like want to you know change up their DNA or or inject themselves with like uh, gene editing kind of homemade syrups or whatever the fuck (laughs) (laughs) to like get get bigger muscles and stuff i don't know (laughs) you know just like a like you like like a dr feel good was just mixing up shit yeah yeah they're just yeah like there's like some people who want to do it to advance medicine and like and people's quality of life and then some people are like i just want a bigger dick yeah. Like, will this make my penis bigger? And it's like, ooh, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, and again, like, not just like the big, you know, huge diseases like that we are struggling with so hard, like cancer and, and HIV and AIDS and Alzheimer's and the the, de- the degenerative life-threatening stuff. Like, there's, there's a lot of diseases we don't understand that are just like debilitating mm-hmm. or, you know, very, very hard to live with yeah um that people are trying to find cures for so. yeah oh man it's so weird it's like uh well and how i understand it is like people want to like i th- always this makes me think of hulk like the incredible hulk because mm-hmm. it's like oh this is all that i think about when i was like reading and oh researching my god it. yeah it's just like a marvel movie of like yes you know this like fucking crazy scientist experimenting in his lab gone wrong maybe gone wrong yeah Yeah. and like uh whoops his you know genetically modified spider just bit some high schooler (laughs) i was thinking (laughs) of spider-man too yeah Yeah. oh my god okay Uh, oh yeah because this is because this is how i understand it it's like this is like super basic and i don't know if this is i mean this isn't scientific at all i don't have a degree in science uh 
which is something yeah, I have in common. Yeah, we should caveat with, that. Yeah, it's something I have in common <laughs> with all the biohackers for the most Not part. Not all, some. some. <laughs> most. A lot. We don't know. A lot. Um, we don't know. But it's, so you, it, biohacking essentially is like what they're what they're doing with the, this dna is they're essentially injecting a body with a dna code that acts like it, this is how i like made myself understand it it like acts yeah. as instructions into their existing dna so like if you have right. something like cancer the instructions maybe would be like oh stop replicating because that's what cancer does mm-hmm. uh you know the cells stop mutating and then it would like stop and and the, or it's like or attack the bad cells if it's like HIV like it, it, or yeah it triggers something that yeah. already exists a, a, a function that already might exist in your body and helps it to fight in a different way or whatever yeah 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 it's like giving it instructions so yeah, uh, yeah that's like interesting and now the whole idea of it is very cool and it's fascinating yeah it's it's super interesting but um. It's, yeah, it's also very uh, weird and scary. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, that's exactly how I think of it, too. Uh, and that's how it's, like, kind of in layman's terms described by a lot of biohackers, like, who are actually experimenting on themselves with this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can access, like I said, a lot of the information to kind of replicate some of these uh, treatments, I suppose. Uh-huh. And they have, you know... There's basic lab uh, material and equipment that you can you can buy, and they're 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 trying to make it happen. And I, I think there are some people, like I said, who are more uh, probably more cognizant of the fact that doing things in a lab environment instead of you know in a dank strip mall <laughs> <laughs> next to a Pizza Hut. Next to a Pizza Hut is better yeah. than, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't my know. God. I don't know. So, so, yeah, this is all, like, the DIY aspect of it is worrisome, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Uh, and there's some other issues with it, too. Um, for as pragmatic and as, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, I don't even know what the right word is, but for as pragmatic as it is, there's definitely some downsides to not having a structured or regulated <laughs> oh my God. Uh, system around it. So I don't know. I, I have a pretty biased opinion of it based on the, lim- the uh, limited amount of information I have. Uh, I, I, I'm sure there's resources out there that are very uh, complimentary and explain a lot of what other biohackers are doing in a in a, a good way but what we have to go off of is like not very not very uh reassuring <laughs> because that's the thing like there's this is like a whole kind of underground uh movement i guess yeah of people of individuals and people who are just trying to make it happen and we don't know like we don't know what the extent like how many biohackers there are in the world or at, at least in the u.s like it, it's all very kind of piecemealy so i don't know it's it's a very fraught idea as it is um just because there's so much uh there's a lot of philosophical and ethical dilemmas that come out of any kind of medicine background like it's the Hippocratic oath is like first do no harm and like when doctors first started experimenting on their first patients like this is what it was so it's kind of the same but I don't know does that make any sense uh yeah I think like it's interesting because the way that they're able to kind of like get around being regulated is by like doing it kind of underground and yeah. but also like practicing on themselves. Cause like if you're not involving others, that's how you get away with it. You just like do things on yourselves, but there's so many problems with this because like, it's like you, you can't have a control group of one to see if anything's no. working. And all of these uh, biohacker groups are working independently of each other. So like we, 
there won't ever be a way how it currently is structured and operating in this like field to ladder all the results up and share information, even though that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be yeah. sh- like cross sharing information, but you have to have like controlled environments to see if, if what you're doing is actually like doing what it's supposed to. Right. The control is like one of the most important aspects of scientific research. Yeah. Like you need to have like, um, an amount of data that's not just one individual yeah. source. Like a, a sample size of one person or even five people is not enough no. to create any kind of hypothesis. Like it's, it's. I yeah. mean, you could create a hypothesis out of out of anything, but I mean like actual results and yeah. uh, testing the hypothesis, I should say. And, and retesting is, and retesting. That's like why, mm-hmm. that's like why things take so long in science. Like why right. they can't, you know, there are, I think there are lots of uh, drugs that exist that could potentially cure cancer or could cure AIDS or, you know, there's like things that exist, but they have not, they are not comfortable enough with the research and they haven't tested it enough to say, yes, this is good. Like there's still probably side effects and there's still all these things like you have to like, it takes such a long time. And that's where the frustration lies for a lot of these people who get into this is the fact that it does take so long. And what's, what's the harm. And if you're already going to die doing something experimental. Yeah. So yeah, that, and I don't know. And so I think a lot of these people like maybe are going through stuff of their own that they um, are trying to deal with. Like in the, um, in the vice uh, piece mm-hmm. there, there's a guy who is HIV positive and he's trying to help develop an alternative gene therapy to replace the, th- the, the current cocktail of drugs that you need to take to right. keep your, um, keep your, your, your blood count, at what it should be your viral your viral load yeah at what it at what it should be so but also he's trying to like repair and reverse right that's he's trying to re- I I maybe I don't know yeah. I don't know if that if that's correct but oh, okay. but all I'm saying is like that's what these people are trying to do yeah. they just really really want to speed the process along but the problem is they're experimenting on themselves because they can't experiment with a big group of people. <laughs> That's illegal. Um, and like, I, there, I, the, there's just so much wrong with it. Yeah. And I, most of all, every, everyone is different. Yeah. Every body responds to treatment differently. And <sighs> it's just hard. It's so hard. So it's, yeah, it's tough. The one thing though, uh, that is interesting and really fucking scary about this and is legitimately scary, not just like hypothetically scary. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's all hypothetical, uh, but a really good example of what could happen if somebody who's, you know, a bioterrorist, for example, got, got into this. Um, so a research team at the university of Alberta, uh, basically what they ended up doing is recreating a, uh, extinct relative of smallpox called horsepox and they stitched it together from fragments of mail order DNA like you can stuff that you can get on the internet uh, and they did it in about six months for about a hundred thousand dollars no like law enforcement can't or didn't say anything about it and uh, they just stitched all this like DNA together all these fragments uh, that they got from various sources and they they put put it all together and created the full genome for this extinct disease. <laughs> I'm still like, why are they selling bits of DNA? Hey Pete. Uh why are they selling bits of DNA on the internet? Well, I, I, I like it's all for research purposes, I think. I don't think it's like uh, I don't know. What like why isn't that like regulated? Like, why could you just buy, like, why could you be just any Joe Schmo in your fucking, like, dorm room and order DNA pieces? That's just weird. Well, well, 
so what they ended up doing, they published their their findings in a journal. Oh, and that sounds a lot of official. Yeah, no, this is a this is a University of Alberta oh, right, research right. team. Okay, okay. Um, they had school funding and they were able to do this. Yeah. Um, and for, for not that much money, actually, all things considered, um, a lot of experts urge them to not publish it because uh, it could be. It tells you how to make horse pox. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some uh, one one uh, expert called it unwise, unjustified, and dangerous. Oh no! And uh, the World Health Organization uh, had a meeting and noted that the uh, this whole thing did not require exceptional biochemical knowledge or skills, significant funds, or significant time. Oh my God! I mean, six months, hundred thousand dollars. That's you know. Uh, so. This is a professional lab-based research team doing this. Oh. Um, now imagine what biohackers are thinking up if they're willing to inject themselves with like homemade HIV treatments. Yeah. So, and the reason this all kind of happened is because our regulatory system is pretty messed up oh. about around all this kind of stuff. Uh, we're very squishy in the states about doing things that could like squelch any kind of innovation or impinge on intellectual property as much as like we do have a lot of bureaucracy around it we also don't want to like stop it so yeah uh so laws that cover biotechnology have not been significantly updated in decades um so it forces regulators to rely on (laughs) rely on outdated frameworks that govern new technologies um i highly doubt there are very many lawmakers in our government that have any sort of grasp on biotechnology or what's going on in the world at all. Oh, you mean <laughs> you mean today. like you mean like all the people that like barely know how to use Facebook? <laughs> yeah, it, it's exactly like that. It's like oh my they, god, they don't understand no. Facebook and how are they what the hell? <laughs> they cannot understand this. There's no way they can hire. The smartest staffers and even the smartest staffers are like, I don't fucking know what's going on in biohacking. Okay. There's too much shit. It's not being reported. Uh, 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 Plus, we got a lot of other bullshit going on. But also, like, also, I, you know what? I feel like this is, like, where I'm, like, going to get a little, like, crazy and feel a little, like, uh, conspiracy theorist-ish. I also feel like at some point they will start to regulate this stuff, only because, like, Big Pharma doesn't want this sort of stuff around. Because I I just, like, I was watching TV the other day, like, Food Network. Uh, just something on Food Network. Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives or something with Guy Fieri. And Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. <laughs> he, and uh, he, uh, oh, it wasn't him. The commercial was, like, Something to do with some sort of problem that only affects one in a bajillion Americans. It wasn't sure, but but you know these TV spots cost tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, and the targeting is very bad. There's it, it's not like oh there's a high correlation of people that have this disease to people who watch diners, drive-ins, and dives. They're literally <laughs> just like oh adults eighteen to fifty five watch this show. Let's put an ad here. And you're that's a waste of money. Also, yeah. why do pharmaceuticals need to advertise? The average person does not need to know about a medication that they can't just go to the store and get. They have to go see a doctor and talk to their doctor about it, who then has to prescribe it. And I was like, this is crazy. But that's how, like, our our – medical system that's how our is. system is and yeah. they want you to be seeing those things so you ask for them it's like advertising drugs and yeah. they're in control and they have so much money and they buy a ton of our politicians and like oh yeah it's so upsetting and i think that's the only way like biohacking will get some sort of like regulations is if it's driven by big pharma because they're like no like we we want people to keep buying drugs if they're if they if we can cure hiv with a a, you know this genetic mutation essentially or whatever that we're like giving to them what then they won't be paying through their insurance company for drugs that they literally have to take every day for the rest of their lives yeah yeah but it's like it's i know i mean even the fbi uh 
keeps an eye on this though. Like, yeah. Not just they have to if there's they have terrorists to. involved. Yeah, because there's there's a this is a unregulated field, and the FBI has to keep tabs tabs on it. But like they can only do so much. But there is um there is there is a biological countermeasures like department in the FBI. And uh, one of the specialists says uh, there really isn't a national governance per se for those who are not federally or government funded. So uh, they, he says they have, the agency relies on biohackers themselves to sound the alarm regarding, regarding speci- suspicious behavior. Well, they're not self-policing so, themselves. It's like, I mean, I, I'm sure that that is, like, the ideal. Like, right. it's this, like, utopian idea of, like, of course, like, open source. It's, like, the whole thing of, like, self-policing. And I, yeah. and that's all good and fine. But, like, how the fuck, like, there's always, like, going to be some bullshit happening. So Also, I feel like the, F- the FBI guy, like, when I think of, like, the guy in charge of this and – I, I picture Michael Shannon, first of all, the actor. And <laughs> second, I picture him being like, fucking, they're just injecting themselves with, like, <laughs> yeah, pieces of DNA they order online. They're fine. That's going to handle itself. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, and, like, the people who've in- injected themselves, like, with their uh, the, the experimental treatments, like, has they have not gotten the results that they want no, for the most part. No, of course not. Because they, <laughs> they have a degree in English from... <laughs> Redlands Some University. <laughs> it's like, get out of here. That's where my dad got his degree. It's oh, a yeah. great no, university. No, it's a great university, yeah. I'm just saying, it's not It's n- not related at all whatsoever to anything. Well, some people work have worked for, like, actual, yeah. you know, for NASA, for, yeah. for, for, re- for research departments that, you know, maybe their funding ran out and they, they lost their job. They have, they do have a lot of practical experience. Like, yeah, there are, there are people one, there was like one success story from this that I thought was really cool. I should have looked up his name, but it it doesn't really matter. But if you read like some of the things that we, um, suggested, uh, reading, you'll read about this kid who was essentially like a really bad high school student, didn't even go to college, like barely graduated high school. Uh, he's from Newport beach. He, um, was really interested in this. He he bought like all this equipment in high school and would like do Keone Gandal. Yeah, yeah. Gandal. Um, Gandal. He uh he was like really into science and would like do little experiments in his bedroom at home and like bought equipment yeah. that he needed to like spin the little test tubes around real fast and mix up the DNA and all that shit. You know, it's like <laughs> real stuff. And he uh applied to like colleges. I don't even think he got in. And then a he uh, started working for, like, companies and because he still knew a lot about this stuff. Anyway, he, like, fucking works at Stanford now, and he's, like... That's awesome. In a lab, like, helping them f- figure out... Like, they're doing, you know, a version of biohacking, but more it, because it's part of an institution. It's more regulated and stuff like that. But, like, yeah. I don't know. It, it is still breeding some people who are somewhat professional, I guess. But I just... I. All of this stuff just reminds me of people like that cabbage fart lady and, you know, like all these... <laughs> the jilly juice. Yeah, the jilly juice and, like, for, people who think for, they're experts. For every well-meaning, like, person who's who's trying to do this, there's, there's some like, fucking... There's... And there's a lot of hubris that goes into this. I if think you so. If you think that, you know, like, all these people... Not all of them, but, like, a lot of these people that go into this with the best of intentions are using their – they're probably extremely, extremely smart, yeah. first of all. But they're also – and there's probably going to be somebody listening to this that's like, I'm in the biohacking community. Go fuck yourself. But like – and mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like beat up on this community Fucking, as a whole. We, we all have hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just – I'm <laughs> – God. Uh, I'm just saying this is – there's it's not well represented right now yeah for every person who is earnestly trying to make a difference trying to find you know make some headway with this there's somebody out there who thinks they're 
smarter than everyone, <laughs> has emotional issues, uh, trying to solve their own bullshit, yeah. w- working through their own shit while they're trying to do this. Yeah. And it's – hubris is the hell of a drug. So – Yeah. And with that said, we're going to talk about one specific biomedical company or – And founder. Bio, bio, found, bio hacking company called Ascendance. And yeah. We mentioned them. They're in the Vice uh, piece. Mm-hmm. So – this guy who started it, he w- was not a scientist. <laughs> he was a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's catching on. As you coined yeah. uh, in the beginning. Okay, yeah, he- that's, that's what I'm talking about. He had like yeah. a, 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 I literally looked him up. I, lo- I looked up his um, degree because I knew he was a college graduate, uh, but I was like, what did he get his degree in and Mm -hmm. um his resume is on linkedin and it said um his college degree was in quote unquote interdisciplinary studies it like okay it's not even like general science it's not even biology it's not even anything specific it wasn't even like accounting is that like a liberal arts degree like i'm so confused i get yeah that's probably it's probably just a liberal arts degree um but basically the basics The basics. And we all know that the basics are just that. (laughs) Basic. We talked about this. This guy is the P.T. Barnum of of biohacking. biohacking. (laughs) His his name – so the name of the company, like I said, is Ascendance Biomedical. Mm -hmm. And the guy who started it, his name is Aaron Trawick. Yeah. Um, And he – was a good marketer. He's a good marketer. He's he he is he's very business savvy. He's got a lot of attention um cuz he was kind of a showman. Yeah. Yeah. He he knows how to like yeah, get attention for what he's doing. Yeah. So you watched the Vice documentary, right? Yeah. About- okay. It- okay. Can I say? Okay. Yeah. The second he came on the screen, and and it was like CEO of uh, what is, uh, Ascendance, Ascendance Biomedical, I was like, oh no, he. And then Pete goes, uh, not to bring up something I already talked about earlier, but he goes, give that guy a beard, and he looks like that dude that just got kicked out of his parents' basement. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, he he does not look like someone you. He looks like. Maybe he like is an understudy to Mystery, the pickup artist, or like <laughs> like a like a student of that. Um, I think he looks like a robot in a human suit. Yeah, he's like an Egger. He's an Egger suit. He's an Egger suit. He, uh, yeah. I mean, it could it could be the fact that he was wearing a, a very ill fitting suit in the in the Vice doc. Dude, just get that shit tailored. It would look so sharp. Or just like don't wear a suit. You don't yeah, have to. Yeah, wear just a regular button up shirt. Maybe he liked it, but yeah. yeah. So this guy, he's yeah, he's just he's just an awkward dude. He's but he is pretty. He's really well spoken in this Vice documentary. He he uh, seems very um, like very earnest. Like he he has a vision. Um, but it's like a and, business vision. Like that's the only vibe I got from him, which is which a lot of people have a problem with. Yeah, in this community. Oh my god! So. I, yeah, I can't wait for everyone to watch this. Literally, it's eleven minutes. You guys, you get it's so great. much. You get so much. It's very good. You get a lot yeah. in eleven minutes. Um, this guy, man, he just he just uh, he just did a lot. He like I said, he's like a showman, and he was just yeah. trying very hard to get like. Recog- the, like the whole movement kind of recognized, I guess. Um, well, I think what like put him on the map was in October of 2017. We referenced this guy earlier, but um, uh, his co- oh, yeah. his colleague, yeah, his colleague Tristan Roberts, uh, shot himself up with a dream with a gene treatment to- for his HIV. We kind of like referenced mm-hmm. him earlier. So yeah, uh, and. In the so they li- they live they Facebook lived this and Trey Wicks in it kind of like talking through the video and I remember seeing this uh, when it close to when it happened because I feel like a lot of news outlets picked it up and were like what is biohacking yes. and it's like you know this guy is injecting himself with um uh with a An treatment experimental treatment experimental yeah. treatment and uh you know he had to inject himself uh and he he was like. 
a part of this he he was like noted as a colleague and i think it's cuz you have to kind of be involved in biohacking to use it otherwise it right. gets gray like we talked about like you're not supposed to help you're not supposed to like facilitate other people doing it really yeah um and so people like it got a lot of attention on biohacking and other biohackers who were like kind of prominent took notice and were like oh this is interesting like yeah, let, let's have a meeting. Let's, you know, talk about financing. And people that were, like, on the fringe started paying attention to yeah. Treywick. And I think that kind of went to his head a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he, he started getting attention. And yeah. then he was like, okay, now I have a platform. Like, now I have, the you know, eyeballs on me. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and he was... You needed to get funding, obviously. So yeah. he was trying to take advantage of every opportunity. Yeah. And he was familiar with this because – and I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I don't know if you r- read this also, but uh, I don't want to say the name of the article because it will give away the ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he out, – right out of college, he had a cousin who is fascinating. Her name is Edwina Rogers. She was an economic advisor to the George W. Uh, White House, and also she was the founding executive director of the Secular Policy Institute, which is an organization that promotes the separation of religion and public policy. And she is wow. also the chief executive currently of the Center for Prison Reform. So she's like involved. Wow. Yeah, she's like wow. doing things. And he graduated college and he was like i need a job and she's like okay well i've been thinking about starting up this um this nonprofit called global health span policy institute where it's like all about research and promotion of expanding healthy human lifetimes so kind of like starting to edge on the biohacking and and she's like all right i'll give you a job you seem they they didn't really know each other very well um and she made him coo but he uh, didn't really know what he was doing immediately, and she figured this out. Uh, be- and she eventually fired him because he was like acting like the CEO, like he was taking, mm. he was taking like, um, uh, like invites to seminars and shit, like including airfare and hotel and like kind of like gifts and stuff like that. Yeah, on her and, like, behalf. Added- yeah, in a nonprofit, you cannot do that. Like, or, or you just can't like. I think you could do it if you're gonna speak. You can. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he was like taking it without her knowing. Like he was. Yeah, like, he was totally taking advantage. He was of, taking of, advantage yeah. and like and like being like sketchy and secretive and like being like he was leading this whole thing when it's like no, dude, you're in charge of operations. Like you aren't in charge here. Anyway, yeah. so she like uh, fired him. And I, I and this is his his cousin aunt? or cous- cousin. Yeah, yeah that's this right. was his cousin. And so I feel like when when he did the Facebook live stream and like started getting attention from you know all these things, he's really started kind of feeling himself. And then he and then when maybe the attention was like dying down a little bit, came another opportunity at the Austin Biohacking Conference. Earlier this uh-huh. year, uh huh, for him to like, kind of, be stunting again. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and he's like, maybe I'll inject myself this time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he injected himself with a experimental batch of herpes, like cure, cure. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I mean, and he did it on stage. He he took dropped his pants. His pants. Off. He injected it into his left inner thigh, and it was just like, oh, my fucking God. And it was like a Facebook Live thing again. Do you know what's sad about it? They're like, but, it wasn't even a full audience. <laughs> I know. I Oh, my God. I totally – they, like, pan out. They, like, show his, like, fucking – himself injecting himself. And then they, like, pan out to the audience, and there's literally, like, ten people. Oh, my God. It's but so – the Facebook Live audience was – Probably. Yeah. Dozens more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Eventually, people watched it. But, yeah. okay, the other thing that's fucked up with this, um, first of all, uh, 
this is like a weird side note, side note but he lived in a ta- tantric sex house for a while. And he, bra- okay. he bragged to everyone about it, which like you do no your thanks. thing, but I think that's where he got herpes. And second, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, if I had to guess. Um, yeah. And second, also friendly reminder. I'm not a scientist, yeah, but. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a scientist, but I have a hypothesis uh, yeah. that doesn't need testing. Uh, also wrap it up, you know, like you don't need to get hurt. Yes. You can just wrap it up. If you're trying to have sex for hours on hours, like I understand that might be uncomfortable, but you know, come on, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. That's what tantric sex is. It's like, gross. it's like sting. No, thanks. I always think of sting. (laughs) Yeah. I do not want to be having sex for hours upon hours. No. No woman. I mean, maybe some women do, but like. Not a lot of women want that. No. Also, like, don't you have other things to do? God like, damn it. Eat? I don't know. I want- <laughs> <laughs> like, I would need, I feel like I'd be like, all right, well, it's lunchtime now. You're not done yet. <laughs> you know what gives me coochie twinges? Food. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I want a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. Like, right now live your life yeah yeah <laughs> i won't even podcast for hours because i'm like it's, i'm hungry and aaron yeah. too oh. aaron time to go <laughs> aaron's like we're always like oh you ready she's like i'm grabbing a snack <laughs> <laughs> i'm like hold on i gotta shovel some food in my face <laughs> uh, anyway tantric anyways, sex house. tantric sex house that's okay so anyway okay this is the other fucked up thing so there was a few guys that were his like they were like he was the CEO and he was like the business side of the biohacking stuff. He hired people uh, to be his like lab technicians and stuff because yeah. he really liked assuming the this role of CEO. That That is what gives him life. Yeah. So, he like liked to be the figurehead yeah. of whatever yeah. he was doing. And so his colleagues before this uh, – before this – like uh, conference and before he injected himself with the herpes thing with the herpes uh antidote or whatever um <laughs> they th- it wasn't ready in time and they're like dude you can't do this what are you gonna inject yourself with so like it's unknown if he even injected himself with what he thought was the herpes antidote <sighs> He had to be a showman, though, so... Yeah, so it's probably just, like, syrup or whatever you said it was earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Syrup. Uh, Oh, my God, dude. But, yeah, so this... Him doing that is kind of... It was kind of, like, one of the things that got in between him and his business partners... But there was already some shit going down where he wasn't paying them. Like, he was getting some funding and, you know, things were starting to happen a little bit after that first Facebook Live video. And he – but so he was like, yeah, I'll pay you and all this stuff. And he wasn't paying them and they were pissed. Yeah. In the Vice doc, it all starts to melt down. Oh, my God. uh, It's so good. It's so good. I mean, it's so awkward, but you're just like, what the fuck is happening here? Shit. I mean, you get to see it all unravel. Yeah, it all it is all unraveling. Um, and he, yeah, I, I think their whole their whole philosophy was disrupted by his, which was like more business sided. And it it and this is the problem with all this stuff is that there's always going to be some different sensibilities about how this shit should be presented. Yeah. How you how like. How are you going to get funding for this? How are you going to continue on with your experiments? Yeah. If you know you don't have resources, so yeah, yeah, that's the fine balance because, uh, like, you know, we talked about this being open sourcing and how a lot of people are like, "Hey, we need to be sharing what we're doing. We need to be sharing what we're finding. This, you know, we need to keep it open for other people to see what we're doing because how else can we solve this?" puzzle that's what it is it's like a big puzzle and or a riddle and the more Mm -hmm. people that you can involve in it the more people can give you clues so that you can help you know you can start to solve it the more you keep it sometimes you go down the wrong path yeah well (laughs) sometimes you go down the wrong path and it's bad and and other people are out to create horse pox or whatever and be scary people and the lab coats that worked for Asc- Ascendance were like, 
listen, we should keep this open. If we find some. Uh, if we find something that works, we should share it and other people should build on it and it. we should share it with as many people as possible and we need to keep it open information so that people can't sell it. And then, yeah. uh, and then Treywick was like, yeah, but like we do need to make, we do need to fund this somehow, which is true. Yeah, we need to fund it yeah. and you also need to protect it from people who are, who would want to use it for bad yeah he i feel like in this video he said it, you don't want it falling into the wrong hands and that is something a marvel villain would say that's right <laughs> that is something uh i don't really know who the marvel villains are uh uh, uh thanos thanos <laughs> thanos <laughs> thanos yeah but did i already say that in here how? Not you said it before. I feel like, but in was it just episode. to you? Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I don't know. I, I don't know. know when we were at the movies. Yeah, when someone was uh, like, "What's a thanus?" Yeah, a thanus. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's all all the. That's the thing. That's the crux of why this whole thing is like such a mess, and it's so hard. Is yeah. because the the dueling philosophies are always going to cause friction there's never going to be an agreed upon way to move forward even if you do find like i hope they find a cure for cancer or cure for aids whatever but i I don't know how how it's going to happen they're getting in their own way in a lot of ways if that makes sense well that's the thing people say that they've already found that type of stuff like Mm -hmm. science is so advanced and they're doing all these things, but it's like Big Pharma's not sharing it. Like, yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but who knows? Yeah, but there's so. But again, it all goes back to the fact that you can't know because every human body is different. Yeah, a treatment for one person or a group of people might work, but maybe not for another group Everyone. of people. Yeah, uh, it's. It's not a one size fits all situation. So, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, well, this is very interesting because this all this entire topic has been on my mind for a while. Yeah. Uh, and that's because uh, earlier, or uh, well, it was actually very recently, April 29th mm-hmm. of this year, uh, Aaron Trawick was found dead in a sensory deprivation tank. Oh my god. At the Solex float spa in Washington DC. Like could this Near- be a more interesting ending? It's like the I sixth sense. So. We're like fucking JJ Abrams. Twists and turns. No, that was M Night Shyamalan. Dude. I mean M Night Shyamalan. How dare you? <laughs> uh okay, this place is literal blocks from my house. Oh my god. Uh it's creepy. But yeah, it's a uh, it's weird. So, first of all, what? Washington D.C. Yeah. Second of all, sensory deprivation chamber. Is this a conspiracy? Oh my god! I, <laughs> is it? Is the government involved? Did Michael Shannon get involved <laughs> from the FBI? I have no idea. I don't think so. I don't I mean, think so. This guy was a trip. Like, yeah. if you watch the, I feel bad for kind of making fun of him a little bit, but if you watch the Vice, the short Vice doc about him, um, you could tell like he's he's not, uh, he's maybe got some issues. He's like, yeah. I don't know, he's he's very well spoken, and but in recent months he has been kind of alienating himself from his colleagues and family and so um hi also who the fuck knows what happens when you inject yourself with random shit i know you can't be doing that and that was just what he did on facebook live like that's I mean, what that's we thought we like don't his, know we don't know his daily life we don't know his daily life we don't know you know if he was you know if he had some mental illness some family members say it ran in the family yeah uh he also when the uh dc pd like investigated they investigated it as a crime yeah. like um they found drug paraphernalia um his his uh who you mentioned earlier his uh cousin mm-hmm. 
she she like told press that uh, that police had found drug paraphernalia, possibly uh, ketamine, um, oh, right. in his pants pocket. Yeah. So, um, she thinks maybe he t- he took the drugs, lost consciousness, and drowned in the tank. But yeah. Who knows? Well, there was so. no like foul play or reported or anything, so no. that's a pretty good guess. I feel like. Yeah. So I don't know. I. I it's just. It is a very. It's. A, it's very tragic. It's. Uh, probably a coincidence that all this happened. Obviously. Yeah. I think some some people in the biohacking community do want to ascribe some kind of uh, conspiracy. Th- theory to it just because he is doing he's out he was out and loud about being against big pharma and they want to like say oh he was he was getting into some new new stuff and big pharma wasn't gonna like it and it's like all right yeah that's a little cuckoo i mean he was there's no i don't know it's like that thing of where when you're like really out there the government's like yes like (laughs) Please keep saying these things because you seem not legit. Yeah. The more you keep, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like, but I feel like Big Pharma had had the least to be worried about with him too, because he was just like, I don't like he he was keeping everything secretive. There's no way they were finding actual cures to anything, like Mm-mm. you know, with a fucking broken microwave and a. a <laughs> cocktail shaker they're just like mixing little dna parts in there and like heating it up and i don't know what they're doing (laughs) but yeah yeah it's all it's it's very sad that he 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 died um it's a very uh, weird death too i think well yeah i don't yeah he was young too he was he was only like 28 yeah he's only 28 years old and it's it's just um he was though the at the forefront of this whole entire uh, quote unquote revolution of this biohacking community, and for as like out there as he was, I think, and for as much as like I think a lot of people in the community actually didn't love his like tactics or his approach to everything, yeah. he definitely like has brought attention to this field and. I, I don't know. Like, there's just so much about it that it's so nascent and it's so, uh, so not well understood that, of course, it's going to be kind of poo-pooed. Like, yeah. we just kind of shot on it for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's still but steaming. I, I still, like, I still think it's so noble and I think it's. I get what what people are trying to do. I understand, you know, what the the impetus is behind a lot of this, uh, the idea behind this. It's I think it's great. Yeah. But you have to have fucking rules, man. Yeah. Someone I feel like someone in the documentary was like, you know, it's not fair that people that sick. The reason they're doing this, and they're they're kind of like Mavericks. They're like the it's not fair that you, if you're sick, you have to be rich to get better yeah, and to get help. And that's why like they're trying to do this. And yeah, ideally some of the biggest, you know, institutions, whether they're big pharma companies or, you know, schools or whatever would be funding open sourcing Mm -hmm. to try and find, you know, cures to these things and, and to make them for affordable prices and all those things but no one's really doing that because then how would they make the money they're making so yeah i don't know uh, it's just too much sometimes like also what are the side effects we've all heard those side effects from crazy ass pharma commercials from stuff that's fda approved it's like oh like side effects may include long ass titties butt hair diarrhea yeah like it's like what i don't want any of those things anal discharge yeah. uh is that poop or something else like what the fuck i don't want that fuck is it poop or something else it, it doesn't matter forget i asked i just don't want it i don't want something just oozing out of my butthole like what the fuck uh, one of me and DJ's favorite things to do is make up uh, pharmaceutical names, like names for things that oh, like are like so, like our favorite one is uh, 
like if you fart too much. <laughs> What's it called? It, it's called uh, tutisha because you have toots. You need to take your tutisha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, oh. it's not FDA approved though, guys. We're we're just we're we're biohacking that one together still. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> wow, um, that's all I got. I yeah. think for this, I I'm sorry if you are. You know, in the community of biohackers and you're like, shut the fuck up. Um, I don't care. Well, we (laughs) never claim to have known what we're talking about. Um, And I also, I don't, I don't think it's like all bad. I just don't think that it's like, it's not good right now. Like it's, there's, uh, there needs, there's, I don't know. I don't, we, whatever, we can have our opinions. Yeah. There's just so much that we don't know about it, yeah. but that's because it's like kind of underground. So, okay. well, well, follow us on social meets. Yeah, uh, DTFU podcast uh, everywhere, mm-hmm. and our website, dtfupodcast.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. You can find our Patreon there. Uh, it's if you just want to go straight to Patreon, it's patreon dot com slash DTFU podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, just, I hope that everybody is doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Living their best lives mm-hmm. as much as they can. And being excellent to each other. And being excellent. Um, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Is that all? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye.